So what's up guys, I'm back with a new tutorial. Today we're gonna talk about cloth simulations on cars. So kind of like a um, cloth reveal simulation they use on big events when they reveal new car concepts or whatever. So this is what I created. So a very simple cloth simulation on top of a car. So we're just gonna jump right into Blender. I'm gonna show you how I did it. So I have a simple scene here. I just added two planes, a dark grayish plane, a green plane, so it fits the car paint, a glossy floor with a basic uh, like uh, texture, so nothing too fancy. Um, first, we're just gonna hide our complete scene. We're gonna take our car, we're gonna make it to one mesh, so join all meshes, but before you do this, don't forget to have a copy of this car, so don't destroy your car. Uh, next, we're gonna create a plane, and this is gonna be our collision plane, so we're gonna create this, or this, what we're creating right now, is the collider for the cloth. So just match up the size, subdivide it and next we're going to use a shrink wrap modifier don't forget to add a floor plane otherwise the shrink wrap goes goes into infinity we're going to use projection on the uh, shrink wrap modifier and negative and that's pretty much it so now we're going to apply it we're going to hide everything hide our floor we're going to uh, use alt s to puffer up the mesh so it's outside of the car and doesn't intersect next we're going to use the decimate modifier and just uh, make the resolution lower because the less polygons you have in the simulation the better especially on colliders so i'm really going to break down this mesh so it's as low poly as possible but still keeps the shape so i think this looks pretty good so now we're going to move on we're going to select the edges uh, of the floor, basically. So I'm basically creating a floor out of the collider so the fabric doesn't just fall into the infinity floor. It's going to land and sit like there was a floor since this is our collision object. Next, we're going to create our cloth. So this plane is our cloth. So subdivided. Then we're going to hop over to the physics tab. We're going to create a cloth tag in the physics tab and a collision tag. And now if we play play uh, with the space button, it's going to simulate fabric. So we're going to add uh, smooth shading. We're going to add a material for now. I'm going to edit the shader at the end of the video. So don't worry. I'm just making it blue so I can determine what our cloth is. So I did another subdivision, another simulation. So it looks good to me. So what we're going to do next is create a hook object so basically we're going to create an empty object that hooks to the fabric so we can animate the hook and pull the fabric from a certain point and don't forget to turn on self collision um, so now we're going to create the vertex group which we will connect to the hook object so i'm going to um, use two holding points on the fabric so just create a vertex group assign it Next, I'm going to add the 3D cursor into the center of our selection, add an empty object, go to the uh, modifier tab, we're going to create a hook modifier, um, select our hook object, so the empty object, and our vertex group. So now, if we simulate this whole thing, oh, and don't forget to add a pin vertex group, so in the physics tab under cloth, uh, we have to pin the vertices. So now it's going to pin the simulation and this pin will get controlled by our empty object. So now I'm just going to speed through this process because this will be just tweaking, a lot of tweaking, unlimited amount of tweaking. And also don't forget to uh, turn off the render uh, for the collider. So we don't want to render the collider. Um, so I'm just tweaking the collision mesh a bit. Uh, and now we're just going to fly through, tweak, 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 uh, keyframe our empty hook object. And that's basically how it's done. And this is pretty much already the solution. So using this, what you learned so far, you could now start doing it yourself. So what's going to come now is just me tweaking uh, over and over and over. And actually towards the end, I decided to not um, use a vertex group holding both edges. I actually decided to just hold one edge at the end. I twisted the plane a little bit so it falls in a more organic way basically keyframing the empty object I changed the scale a little bit of the fabric just until it looks nice I also noticed that the other side of the car looked nice I meant to render the other side actually so I swapped the sides because the fabric just fell better on the other side so things like this just happen um, that's always the annoying part on simulation Next, we will bake our simulation. Uh, when I bake and render stuff, I hop right over to CSGO and lose a quick mat, uh, and just lose a quick match. I was very bad in this uh, little match. I don't know, somehow the enemies were very good. I had some good rounds, but altogether, uh, I lost. So that was very sad. So I went over to Discord, to my Discord. Actually, uh, I started it last week, as you maybe have seen. 
it's very active already so you can share your stuff there you can uh, listen to music with your friends there you can ask questions and also um, if you share your work i'm going to review it in future videos so it's a super funny group uh the people are always active like they're always active there's no time of the day uh they're not active actually so it's very funny group. I really recommend uh, you come by and say hi. Um, so um, once I left Discord and looked at my baking, uh, I don't know what happened. So it was completely broken. So what I did is unsubdivide my mesh uh, one time down and I added a subdivision modifier on top and just rebaked it and then it worked. Uh, I have no idea what happened uh, in the last bake. So that was quite annoying. So now it looked okay. Not as good as I hoped, but for a quick shot, I thought this was good enough. So now, next, we're gonna render, uh, render, we're gonna um, set up our shader. So basically, the shader is gonna be based on the velvet node shader. You can use different techniques to creating a fabric, but I like the velvet shader, but I'm also a little bit old school. Um, I'm making it green, so it fits the car paint in the background. And now I'm gonna add a glossy node as well and a Fresnel to mix these two shaders together. So we got this furry look in the Fresnel. So it just looks more like a furry fabric, even though it isn't. So it's a faked fabric, but for this render, I thought it looks fine. So that's pretty much it for the shader for now. Uh, then I did a quick render and it looked looked okay in my eyes. Like we could have subdivided the fabric a little bit more, I think. So it's a bit more detailed, but it's okay. Um, now I'm doing a quick animation of the camera. So it's not completely still. So I parented it to an uh, empty object in the center of the car. I'm just basically rotating it a little bit. So very simple, two keyframes in the beginning and, and the end, that's it. So now I'm gonna add a transparent principal shader in between and mix it in so we can see the headlights through the fabric. I tried a few things here. Um, I wasn't sure what the best way is. So at the end I used the principal shader. I also tried translucency, but it was too diffuse. So you can use whatever here. It was just a lot of tweaking. I thought in this scenario, the principal shader looked quite nice. That's pretty much it. Then I started rendering. Here's the result. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time. And maybe see you guys in Discord. We also play games together in Discord. It's really fun. So bye guys.